So now that you're becoming pretty proficient at stoichiometry, let's add a little twist to it. Let's add a concept called limiting reagents. So far, when we have dealt with any of these stoichiometry problems, you've only ever had one given. So it's been pretty obvious what substance we were working of. But what would happen if I gave you multiple givens? What if I gave you, instead of just one reactant, the information for both reactants at the same time? Well, the thing is, about the mole ratio, the mole ratio tells you specifically how the reactions are how the reaction is going to go to completion so if you suddenly have the mass of two different substances you have to work out which one of them is called the limiting reagent which one is going to be the reactant that limits how much product can be produced so the key to this is and this is what people can tend to mess up is this word right here that the limiting reagent must be the reactant. Every once in a while, you'll see example. You'll see some problems where you'll get um, the given for the two products. It doesn't matter if you given if your given is two products. If that's the products, that means the mole ratio has been met. You don't care which one is a quote limiting reagent because neither one of them can be a limiting reagent because neither one of them is a reactant, and that's the real key to all of this. Now, th to figure out the limiting reagent, there's two ways to do it. If you look at it in a textbook, they show you a slightly different method than what I'm going to show you. But no matter what, the mole ratio is what's going to determine the limiting reagent for you. You have to meet the mole ratio. And whichever one doesn't meet a mole ratio is automatically the limiting reagent. So for example, let's say I want to make water. Water reacts in the ratio of two moles of hydrogen to one mole of oxygen. If you don't have that ratio, Whichever one runs out first, that one's going to stop the production of the water. So let's say instead of having two moles of water, I only have one mole of water. Well, and but I have a mole of oxygen. Well, obviously, if I have my mole of oxygen, I'm going to run out of hydrogen first because it's being used in a two to one ratio. That's the theoretical behind it. Let's do an actual example problem. Now, like I said, the textbook does it a little bit differently than I do it. My method is slightly longer but it will give you not only the limiting reagent, but it also answer the question at the same time, whereas the textbook always makes you do an extra step. So again, you can use whatever method you want, but let me show you mine so you can understand what I'm doing. If you mix five grams of hydrogen with f and five grams of oxygen, how much water will be produced? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do two stoichiometry problems side by side. My given in the first one is five grams of hydrogen. My given in the second one, in this particular example, is five grams of oxygen. Okay, because it says I have five grams of each. So like I said, I'm gonna do the stoichiometry out for both of them, and I'm gonna solve for water. Because it says how much water. And that's the other key to all limiting reagent problems. You will always be solving for the product. Okay? Always solving for the product in a limiting reagent problem. So the five grams of oxygen, uh, hydrogen. So let's first thing we always do is we always convert to moles. So I wrote one mole on the top and 2.02 grams of hydrogen on the bottom. And again, because I'm converting to water, I look at my mole ratio and I get two moles of hydrogen for every two moles of H2O based on the balanced chemical equation here and here. Then, of course, it says how much water, so it always means grams. It, if it wants moles, it'll always tell you moles. So I'm going to take one mole, put it on the bottom, 18.02 grams of water, go on the top, pull out my handy-dandy calculator, and I hit my parentheses, and I go 5 times 2 times 18.02, close my parentheses, enter, divided by 2.02 .02 times 2, oops, missed a couple numbers there, times 2, enter, I get 44.6. So using the 5 grams of hydrogen, I will produce 44.6 grams of water. Pretty good. Now let's do the same thing for the oxygen. One mole goes on the bottom. Of course, we're talking about oxygen gas, so I have to look, pay attention to my subscript, so that would be 32 grams of oxygen. Do my mole ratio, but now I'm going to do it for oxygen. So one oxygen in my balanced chemical equation to two waters. And then finally, again, I'm going to convert to grams of water. 
pull up my fancy TI-84 calculator and I say okay 5 times 2 times 18.02 divided by just 32 and I get 5.63 which one ran out first well simple whichever one produced less product is the one that ran out first so therefore my answer is 5.63 grams and oxygen is my limiting reagent now it didn't ask me for what my limiting reagent is but I'm gonna identify it anyway because I might as well it's right there so I've identified so this is how much this is my final answer when I've done it so like I said you can do if my method it's a little bit longer because you have to do two stoichiometries the book has you stop at the mole ratios and compare the mole ratios to each other and then convert to grams it doesn't matter how you do it if you have a better way use it okay so now that we've seen the theory let's do some more example problems Determine the limiting reagent and the theoretical yield of the product if one starts with this and this. Okay, so you have 1.20 grams of aluminum, 2.4 grams of iodine. How many grams of aluminum are left over in part A? So there's actually two parts here, so I'm going to break this down into two things. The first thing we need to do is we need to identify that limiting reagent. So, of course, we're going to do two stoichiometry problems because it also asks for the theoretical yield of the product. Now, keep in mind, anytime you see the word theoretical yield, we're talking about stoichiometry. Okay, so when we calculate percent yield in a later podcast, we're going to be talking about stoichiometry all over again. So we're going to set up two stoichiometry calculations side by side. The first one, of course, we're in grams, so we've got to convert to moles. So one mole goes on the top, and the weight from the periodic table for aluminum that's at 9, 9, 8 grams, goes on the bottom. Now I look at my balanced chemical equation. Again, I'm always talking about product in the end, so I'm going to go from two aluminums here to two Al-I-3s over here. And last, it says uh, the yield, so I'm talking about grams, so one mole goes on the bottom and then the weight from the periodic table of AL and three I's. Now I don't happen to know that off the top of my head. I doubt you do either. So I'm going to calculate that real fast. So I've got 26.98 for the weight of aluminum plus three iodines and three times 126.9. Forgot the decimal. 0.9. Close my parentheses. Enter is 407.68. grams. Okay, and so now I'm going to solve for the, theory, for the potential mass of aluminum triiodide that's produced from this 1.20 grams. So I've got 1.2 times 2 times the answer that I just calculated divided by 26 having a problem with that decimal place. 9, 8 times 2 is 18.13. Now I'm going to repeat that process, but I'm going to do it for the iodine. So one mole. Now because I'm talking about diatomic iodine, I need two times the weight of that iodine. And I know that iodine is 126.13. 9 times 2 is 253.8 grams. Okay, so I'm talking about now the iodine. So I have 3 iodines to my 2 Al-I-3s. Now notice, again, I didn't point it out in the last problem, but it's the same here, that the end of these calculations are exactly the same when I compare them. So I don't have to do any new calculation there. I already just take that number from the periodic table that I had from before. So now I do my calculation out. 2.40 times 2 times 
four zero zero seven point six eight divided by two oops two fifty three point eight times three is two point five seven grams of aluminum triiodide. Okay, so this problem had two, this part A had two questions. The first question was what's the limiting reagent? So clearly iodine is the limiting reagent because it produced less aluminum triiodide. And it says and the theoretical yield. So my theoretical yield is 2.57 grams. So look at that. See, like I said, in doing one step, uh, just doing it a little bit longer, I can solve for both the answer and identify the limiting reagent. Now let's tackle this other part. This other part that says how many grams of aluminum left over in part A. Let me get rid of my old calculations. Oops. Okay, so how many grams of aluminum are left over in part A? Now there's two ways to do this. You can use the information that you just calculated and say, okay, well, if this much is being produced, then I can calculate how much aluminum was reacted to produce this much product. I don't like doing that, and I don't like doing that for this very specific reason of I don't like using numbers that I calculated. I'd rather use numbers that were given to me in the problem. This way things are consistent. So since I know that iodine is the limiting reagent, I start with iodine in this calculation. And what I'm going to do is I am going to calculate here how much aluminum reacted with the iodine. So I compare my iodine to my aluminum. Okay? And I fill it in. Did it again. That's a nine grams. Okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually calculating how much aluminum reacted with this iodine. If I can figure out how much reacted and I know how much I started with, I can subtract them and get my final answer. So let's calculate this. So I've got, let's clear out everything I had there before, parentheses, 2.4 times 2 times 26, 9, 8, divided by 2, 50, 253.8 times 3. And I get 0.17. So this is 0.17 grams of aluminum that reacted. That is not my answer. That is just how much reacted. I started with 1.2. So I say, okay, 1.2 minus 0.17 is equal to 1.03 grams of ALO of AL left over. So that's a nice easy way to calculate how much I have remaining in my process. So that's how you do basic limiting reagent problems. Uh, next podcast is going to be some uh, some information related to percent yields and some calculation and then look at the podcast later for some a lot more example problems involving limiting reagents.